And joining me this morning here on WOJB is Billy Luther, a Native American independent independent film producer and director. He's made several documentaries and short films, and uh, we'll be talking about his m- most recent release coming up on November 24th in select theaters and exclusively on Netflix. Uh, Billy, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So before we get into uh, Fry Bread Face and me, let's talk a little bit about your history and some of the films that you've worked on in the past. Sure. You know, I've worked in uh, documentary filmmaking for the past probably 15 years. And just telling stories about contemporary Native life, um, you know, the, the images that I didn't see growing up. Um, you know, the things that I saw when I was younger was more of historical. It was more of, you know, just kind of like our past. And I just, yeah. the contemporary life was really exciting to me. Mm, okay. And where did your interest in filmmaking start? Was this further back in high school days or middle school or how, how did this come about in your life? I was probably six years old, you know, okay. when I when I saw a film on the big screen, and I just remember what it felt like, you know, that what what that brought, you know, the images brought me into this world, and I just knew I wanted to be a part of it. I didn't know anything about directing, screenwriting. Yeah. I didn't even know what those those were. So um, I just kind of followed that path, and it wasn't until probably eleven or twelve that I was like, I want to be a filmmaker. Wow! Yeah. And, um, yeah, I was kind of the same way very much. I've been in film and video production for the past 30 years. And again, it started back in junior high for me when I had a, a, a still camera put in my hands and I thought, oh, I could do photography and all that sort of fun stuff. It was really, really cool. Unlike today where people can whip out a camera out of their pocket, you know, and shoot a film with their, with their phone camera. Right, right. Yeah, now there's more access to it. You know, everyone's an editor now. They're editing on their phones. Um, yeah. I, I, it's exciting, you know. I, it's exciting. And I don't necessarily feel that's a, a threat to, you know, filmmaking. I think there's still a lot um, in terms of getting a camera and a crew and, you know, the cinematography of it all. So I think it's really it's accessible to a lot of people who don't necessarily have, access, you know, access to cameras. Yeah. No, it is a lot more accessible, and the quality of a camera on a phone is just as you know quality as a uh, you know a film camera. Um, not so much for film itself, but high definition cameras because they're all 4K now. 8K is becoming a bigger thing, and um, it's just going to get better and better. And to have it in your pocket is really really nice. Totally, you know, my son he really loves photography. And, you know, he's 16 years old and he plays around with it. And he also does his, you know, films, uh, short films on it from his uh, filmmaking class in high school. So, you know, he's excited and he's learning all about kind of the, you know, the stops, the, you know, the focus. And it's it's been pretty exciting to see his interests grow, you know, in, in, in photography. Yeah. Well, your first documentary film uh, was called Miss Navajo. Talk just a little bit about that and and how that encouraged you to keep moving forward. Yeah, you know, um, it was funny because I started writing a script, um, Miss Navajo, and it was loosely based on my mother's experience being Miss Navajo in the 60s. And I started doing some research and I started going back and forth because I live in L.A., so I'd go back and forth to the reservation Sure. and interview these women and i just started doing transcriptions of their their interviews and i was like this needs to be a documentary so i kind of fell into the documentary world and i you know just borrowed a camera you know like you said we just grabbed a camera and yeah. you know got a sound guy and we went out and filmed and it led me to premiering world premiering at the sundance film festival festival in 2007 and you know it was like i started working consistently after that in documentaries Wow. Yeah. That's all it takes. You know, you just kind of fall into it by accident sometimes that that's your passion. And, you know, for, right. for me, it was a hobby and now I get paid to do a hobby and it's one of the best jobs I have in the world. I keep telling students that I teach uh, in video production, if it's your passion, do what you are passionate about and you'll never work a day in your life. I totally agree with that. 
You know, I um, we'll, we'll talk about it probably later, but I also write and direct on a television show called Dark Winds. Oh. And, um, you know, in the writer's room, um, there's like six of us. And all we do, you know, Monday through Friday, you know, is throw ideas out, imagine, make believe. And I get paid for that. You know, we, you know, we have storylines and characters and, you know, we're building these kind of like uh, thrilling thrillers and, you know, crime and solving murders. And it's pretty cool, you know, and that's yeah. really what I wanted to do. I really wanted to dive into the creativity, the mind. And um, here I am, you know, it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, so we're here to talk about uh, your most recent production. Um, it's a coming of age story, and it's called uh, a Native American dramedy. Um, explain how you came up with that dramedy word, and and how this kind of paints the picture for the film. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the first time I've heard it as a dramedy. <laughs> so <laughs> I, um, but I know what that is. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a drama that has some humor and, 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 you know, to it. So it's not necessarily a full out drama or it's not a, you know, straightforward comedy. Right. So it kind of balances yeah. the both, both of them. So yeah, you know, I, I just, I grew up, you know, I'm Navajo, I'm Laguna Pueblo, I'm Hopi. I come from three tribes, which are three different, very, very different worlds. Uh, but I also grew up on the uh, Navajo reservation, or I'm sorry, off the reservation in, in San Diego. So I was, right. you know, they called me an urban Indian. So every time I'd go back to the reservation, I would, you know, be kind of this fish out of water. You know, there's no electricity. There's no running water out there. So it was kind of cut off from this outside right. world. So yeah. I, yeah, it was an um, experience. So I just really wanted to put that on paper and tell the story. So is Fry Bread Face and Me a a personal reflection of an actual, you know, actually your life in some sense. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I do feel that there's some, a part of me in this story, you know, I did make things up for story, you know, purposes and uh, created conflict and characters that didn't really exist, but yeah, it's, it's a, if you dive down into this story and this, this main character, Benny, who's 11 years old. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. There's a, you know, there's a deep connection to his story of mine. Well, and I, I kind of got that from the opening scene uh, that has some of your, I'm assuming it's your voice narrating the scene as it goes along. Yeah. You know, that wasn't, um, it wasn't part of the script, you know, um, I, uh, I guess, you know, it was my documentary background that really wanted to ground this story. And, and to do that, I needed to tie in my personal you know, reflections into the, into the story. So yeah, my whole movies are in there too. They book in the film. So yeah. I, I think, you know, that's my documentary mind and, and just went in to make the story go a little deeper than I thought. Oh, uh, well, it was, uh, it's a very impressive film. I got to preview it. I actually watched it uh, three times just because oh, I was enamored by the cinematography and uh, I don't know who your director of photography was, but, he did a very good job. It was a, a very awesome film. And uh, again, uh, I'm assuming it was, uh, how did you pick the location and, and what was the location for this? Great. Yeah, my, I, I just want to first say that my DP was Peter Simonite and he had worked on Terrence Malick's Tree of Life. And so he had a great eye and great kind of resume um, to really pull this off. Um, but we shot the film in Santa Fe because at the time COVID was, um, you know, we're in the peak pandemic. So we were um, close oh. our, uh, the Navajo nation was closed off from filming. Um, so we had to find a place that kind of looked and resembled the, the ranch of my grandmother's. Okay. So we went and found this location in Santa Fe and built entire set from, you know, nothing. And um, it works. It works. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it it was very, very well done, I thought. And uh, again, I look at technical things sometimes, but the story was, uh, it was just a great little story about these two cousins from different parts of Native worlds, you being in the urban area and uh, Fry Bread Face being from, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, she was very accustomed to living out there where Benny was uh, a fish out of water of sorts. Yeah, you know, and, and I think that that, you know, the kids, you know, uh, they were non-actors and um, they were, this is their first film. So 
it really, I mean, what they brought to life, you know, these characters was beyond what I wrote on the script. And I think Charlie, who plays Frybread, just, you know, it's, she's incredible. She's going to be a star. She's, she's really um, a funny, funny actor and um, charming. And, and Benny's this quiet kid, you know, who just is kind of searching for identity. And that was kind of what I looked at in casting Kier, who played um, Benny. Wow. That's her first films. Yeah. First, first time. First film. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really cool because uh, I would have, especially uh, for the gal doing that part, um, her sarcasm and the timing was hilarious sometimes. It was just uh, very, very good. Yeah, she, you um, know, we, her, her audition tape was amazing. We, we cast her right as soon as that was done. <laughs> well, this is a radio interview, but we are putting this on Facebook and YouTube. And with that, I'd like to uh, show the preview to the film um, to those visual audiences. And the radio audience will just have to be intrigued to say, oh, I got to see this preview in person. And they can either rewatch the interview. I did put a link to the preview uh, YouTube page on our Facebook page as well. So let's just take a listen to this. Grandma, over on the Navajo Rez. You said I could go to Fleetwood Mac. Devil music. Stevie Nicks is a witch. And this is how my summer began. Are you fry bread face? Stop staring at Jeff Bridges. Just press the gas! One hand on the wheel and a cigarette on the other. That's a lesbian. A woman with hairy underarms. You don't have any handy arms. We have annual passes. You get to see Shamu whenever you want? Where are you going? We've got things to do. Are you coming or not? You're only here because your parents wanted you to become a man. Doesn't look like that's gonna happen. I don't need a witch if they... You think you know everything! You don't! You know what you gotta do. You a cowboy or a cowgirl? I'm just Benny. You're beautiful. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Do you like being called Fry Bird Face? It's round and greasy. What do you think? But it sure is good. <laughs> oh, that's just awesome. It was a great, <laughs> a great video to watch. Um, what are you hoping to? Um, see out of this what uh what are the reviews that you've been getting so far at the different uh movie festivals the response has been pretty pretty great you know we we premiered in austin um in march and we had our international premiere in toronto so we had a good mix and we've been touring the film you know the past you know i don't know eight months now and the response has been great with native audiences and non-native and i think you know I, the reviews have been pretty, pretty, pretty solid. And, you know, we're 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, whatever that means. <laughs> um, I just, you know, I couldn't have, uh, you work so hard on a film and you just hope people like it, you know? And I think it's resonating with a lot of audiences and, you know, especially our, our native youth that really didn't have this representation, you know, and, and I think they, they're starting to see it now with, with, with television shows like Reservation Dogs, um, Rutherford Falls and um, Dark Winds. So I think this is a pretty exciting time in terms of a, a native wave of, of film and TV. Yeah, I really think there's a lot of, uh, like I said, the, the native films that you mentioned and um, then the the movie that just, I'm drawing a blank now on the Osage. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, Killers of Flower Moon. That was uh, a great story as well. And again, it's things that we don't hear um, growing up in the history books and some of these ways of life that you are depicting in this particular story, you don't hear about some of these things in, especially in urban areas. Um, even though uh, LCO, the Kudere tribe here, is out, uh, we consider it out in the middle of nowhere, but we have a lot more trees than <laughs> you do in Arizona. But right. I'm sure a lot of kids would feel the same way. They get some of their relatives or their cousins that they may not even know they have uh, 
show off out here, and uh, it's just an interesting way to look at life on the res uh, from an urban um, native person's perspective. Totally. You know, when I tour this film at festivals, um, the non-natives are like, I've never been to a reservation, you know, in my life, but you just took me there through this film. And yeah. I think, you know, at times it's like the reservations are literally in your backyard. You know, they're like miles from where you live. You could, you know, go. Right. Um, so I think it's a it's a really kind of a look into this world that comes from a native perspective. It's written by natives. Um, there's native, native creatives behind it. Um, and it's just a story that I wanted to tell that isn't just directly, you know, uh, for a native audience. It's 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 a broad story that yeah. I think they're well, you know, people can connect to. Yeah. Well, it was very well done. I uh, give you two thumbs up from uh, my scale. It was uh, a great movie, and I hope people get a chance to see it. It'll be coming out in select theaters and then exclusively on Netflix November 24th, just uh, for the Native American Heritage Day, which it is Native American Heritage Month. And uh, appreciate the work that you're doing. Keep going. I, you have any new works in, in the books right now? Well, we're off and running with Dark Wind Season 3, you know, in the writer's room. So after the strike, okay. we went straight, we dove straight into it. So, yep, that's it right now. That's what I'm, you know, on. And excited wow. To yeah. Well, Billy Luther, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. And good luck with uh, this film release and uh, your future projects. Thank you so much. All right, take care.